What's going on, people? This is Jay Ghost, and this is going to be a critique of an article that I saw on Truthout, which is a very progressive uh, socialist type website that does a lot of great reporting, but sometimes some of their op eds are not what I actually expect. When I looked at the op ed by Desiree Rodriguez, I wasn't very impressed by it. And this is me just giving that critical view of it in my own words. Something about the feminist wired really rubs me the wrong way. It's very, very divisive. It looks like they take a generalization of everything that is done onto the website. And then they attack women as well as men that they don't like in a very, very peculiar way which I'm not a big fan of, but if you've seen anything by Anita Sarkeesian, if you've seen anything by Adrian Richards, uh, Susan Wilson, they are basically taking advantage by making themselves a victim. And I don't believe that what they're doing is very is necessarily right for the industry. It really does feel like a form of yellow journalism, and it doesn't do anybody any good it just mainly makes themselves look a lot better. Now, the title of the article is called Internalized Misogyny Within the Geek Community. The first paragraph is basically going over what she defines as a community, which is great. It looks to be okay, but she begins to start tearing it down when you get to the second paragraph, wherein she talks about this is what a community should be, but because women, people of color, queer people, and other minorities are not included, that's basically where problematic behavior becomes. Now, women are already in the geek community. People of color are already in the geek community. Queer people, other minorities, there's German, Irish. But the pro what she's basically excluding is white people, and that's something that I have a problem with. Now, let's be fair. I'm black. Nobody's going to know from my voice, but I'm a black person. I mean, I grew up in America. I've also grown up in Japan. And I've had plenty of people that understand, you know, Asian culture. And I can relate to people because I have family in, the, in Asia. I'm not going to get into everything here, but understand... When you're talking about minorities and you're talking about being exclusionary in some way, shape, or form, it's usually a very, very large red flag. And if you're talking about geek culture, geek culture does not have a lot of barriers to entry except you enjoy the fan club as she explained in her first one. But what she's making here is that women in particular have a lot of backlash in the geek culture. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this. There's some women that come into it because they want to profit off of, you know, men, women in the industry. There's cosplayers. There's different criticisms for different people. And that hasn't been anything new. Men see a lot of backlash for a lot of different things. And if you've paid attention to Adrian Wilson, Adria Richards, like what was big about her, you can see that was pretty much something that really, really um, came into proportion, was blown out of proportion. More on that later, and I'm not a big fan of the Adria Richards scandal, so I'm not going to get into it. It did cost her a lot of credibility. It did damage everything about her, and I'm not really going to get too much into it. But what she does is that she also looks to shame people that she doesn't like. She doesn't like Michael Cantor, Jerry Conway, and Todd McFarlane. Now, I haven't looked up Michael Cantor and Jerry Conway, but Todd McFarlane has made very, very dark comics, which is uh, something like Spawn. Now, I don't know where exactly she, Im she implies that women and minorities are marginalized, particularly because... Spawn is a movie that came out in the 1990s, which was decent, but it had a black black protagonist. And basically, he made a deal with the devil to get powers, and he turned against the devil and basically turned into a decent person. 
I don't know what she's trying to imply. She makes no direct quotations, but she instead just calls these people out. And then she goes right into Frank Miller, who talks about how his staple of comics has rape and violence of women. Now, one of the big ones is Sin City. Sin City, one of the most powerful women in the in that thing, was a mute ninja female. On top of that, men are tortured. Um, one of the big tortures was like, I forget the guy's name, but he basically tortured and killed his, um, his nemesis that he'd been going after because that guy had killed Goldie, who he was supposed to be protecting. But... What she's talking about is the women in refrigerators, quote unquote, trope. Now, that trope changed and became stuff in the fridge because it's a revenge plot. There's 20 basic plot lines, and I'll have a link in the underbar for you. But when you talk about being stuffed in a fridge, someone dies that is very close to you, and that is to further your own motivation or story or development. I mean, you got to have some kind of conflict, and what she seems to have a problem with is if any female characters are killed off or raped or anything happens to them in a violent manner, then she has a reason to complain. Now, later on, she talks about how Kevin Smith refused to include women in his comic book men's show, but the link that she has talks about Kevin Smith dealing with a lot of trollish behavior online when people go to shame others. Now, this is something that I find a little problematic myself because Kevin Smith says, hey, it's not okay to sit here and ask questions of someone else in my name. I'm not going to let, let anybody do that. The article sits here and contradicts everything that she has to say about actual real-life comic book stores. And I don't know where she's getting the quote that just because there is a, a comic book show called Comic Book Men, that this is something that is problematic. She doesn't make any article references that I can look into that says that this is a problem. So what she's asking for, women have basically not been carving out the space of their own. But instead, they're supposedly attacking each other. Now, everyone is allowed to have their own opinion of this. Some women don't get along with other women. Some men don't get along with other men. Some men don't get along with women. This has happened. We all deal with it in, in our own different ways. We do get thicker skin. But I read the um, article that she had about Ali Townsend. Ali Townsend's article is basically not talking about the gender divide she sits here and says and basically it's dismissed by miss desiree instead of actually followed up with anything she doesn't talk about women as sex objects or discredits women's abilities and there are no quotations for me to sit here and look at ali townsend's time article magazine i want you all to sit here and look at it for yourself and come to your own conclusions but she seems to say that she's putting down women-centric geek sites and blogs. The main one that she talks about is Mary Sue. From the whole experience personalized sexism, that's discrimination based on being a woman. She does not imply that at all. She doesn't say that it doesn't exist. But she says she's looking at Mary Sue with hopefully seeing what's going to happen with that and... Beyond a trollish guy that sits here and says, tits, 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 they want to express the awesomeness of a new gadget or gizmo that people enjoy, especially in the tech geek community. When she starts with Ali Townsend, I don't really, really pay it. I, I begin to see that I'm losing credit. She losing credit with me. Then she talks about Tara Tiger Brown, and I still don't believe her. I, I don't know what she's talking about because this is 2011, this is 2012, and then this is 2014. And what she's saying is not anything new. There's plenty of people that have plenty of reasons to not like a person. Like the Mary Sue, for all intents and purposes, 
doesn't like Jim Sterling at, at times. And there's plenty of other geek community people that you could actually look into. Now, what really sets this off is that right after talking about how they imply certain things and they're part of this internalized misogyny, she then goes outright to attack Brown and Townsend as products of the patriarchy by discouraging, by encouraging a division between women, as if they can't have a voice of their own, which is something that I don't really agree with. They have their opinions. Not, not everybody is going to agree with their opinions, and you're entitled to that. But don't sit here and tell me that these women are basically saying, oh, hey, we want to have a division between women when they never said anything about that. So what's further ostracizing is that basically Desiree is setting it up that men are exclusionary, women that support these men are exclusionary, and for all intents and purposes, you can't like the medium, you can't like the books, you can't like the comics, you can't like anything in the geek culture because these men are just looking to patronize you or put you down. And she sits here and sets up feminism as creating equality between all men and all women well how in the world did you do that when you put the divide in there in the first place by sitting here and saying that these peop these women are part of the patriarchy and these men all men basically you've generalized all men and all male fans to say well they're going to be the ones that sit here and put you down for your opinion and if you don't you can blame it on patriarchy that's exactly what's the problem. And then right after that, she goes into saying that women of color express this, their disappointment and frustration over lack of other women of color in Marvel's movies. Now, if you've looked at Marvel's movies, it's a proof of concept. There are plenty of heroes, but most of the heroes that are black happen to be mutants and... If you've looked at X-Men and seen that Wolverine has kind of sat here and carried the ball for a little while while they remake X-Men and bring in those people, what in the world are you complaining about? Furthermore, I'm pretty sure that Avengers is going to have black characters. Calm the hell down. Like, Luke Cage is a great one. And if you read the comics, there are plenty of them. I mean, the Marvel movie-verse is far different from the Marvel comic universe that plenty of people have had plenty of representation. <laughs> I don't quite understand. If you're trying to sit here and complain about Marvel or DC, I mean, make, take those complaints up with them. But why does a trans woman need to have a trans character to represent them? in comics that tell fictional stories about various different topics. Remember, there was a time when mutants were all about LGBT because you couldn't really come out, at, so to speak, if you were a mutant. And then if you showed signs that you were a mutant, those basically were representative of LGBT rights in the 1960s. It changed with the times particularly with the comics code so this woman is showing that she has no actual history of what she's critiquing and she doesn't know what she's talking about she's given parameters that people have to have a passion for things but where is her passion for anything of the geek community but what she tells people what she actually tells people is women can start reading Thor comics, okay? What is stopping them? And why is she generalizing that all men are basically calling them and accusing them of being dumb hormonal fan fangirls? That doesn't make any sense. She sits here and just basically absolutely tries to stir up a hornet's nest about women and men and then makes a gender divide that really isn't a case in the geek community. We have women that cosplay. We have women that 
sit here and have great knowledge about different TV shows and movies and books and comics. And it hasn't really changed all that much. There's been female fans for a lot, lot of time. And the only one that's shutting out new fans will be Desiree herself. And it is not something that to sit here and say that we're shaming women when not every woman is going to agree with everybody else's opinion. You're entitled to your own opinion. You are just not entitled to your own facts. But Jesus, this article is truly a bad one. Now, I still like Truth Out. But I'm not going to be interested much in what the Feminist Wire or Desiree Rodriguez has to say. That's my take on it. You're free to have your own take, and I'll see you next time.